Hello everyone, and welcome back to another lore video. This time, we're going to be focusing on the second legendary lord announced for the Empire faction, Balthazar Gelt, the Supreme Patriarch. Let's get into his background. Balthazar Gelt's origin is shrouded in mystery. What we do know is that he comes from somewhere outside of the Empire. Gelt was likely born in the city port of Marienburg as an extremely poor child, having to use his natural skill at magic to disguise lead bars as gold to buy passage to the imperial capital of Altdorf. As he left the port city they arrived in, the glamour spell Gelt placed on the bars wore off, and the sea captain who granted him passage placed a large bounty on Gelt's head for revenge, though there are few that would dare try to collect it now. After he came to Altdorf, he joined the Gold College and studied the art of alchemy, combining it with his growing knowledge of the lore of metal. Alchemy in the Warhammer world is generally understanding the properties of metals and how to ship them using magic. Gelt, in particular, was quite skilled at this and had a strong natural affinity for magic as well. He was fascinated with the art of transmutation, obsessed with learning to turn common materials into precious metals. His obsession drove him to travel the world, seeking ways to further augment his alchemy and magical prowess. He traveled all the way from the Empire to Araby and back, making a stop in Astalia, where he discovered the Amulet of Seagold amongst an elven ruin, which we'll go into later in his equipment section. After returning to Altdorf, Gelt quickly rose to the ranks of his college, his supreme intellect and magical skill allowing him to become Patriarch of the Gold College in a mere decade, an unheard of feat as he was the youngest ever to do so. After taking over leadership of the Gold College, he returned to his research of combining magic and the science of alchemy, which led to his famous experiment of creating more potent forms of black powder. While this advance would put Gelt in extremely high favor with the Imperial Engineer School, who normally despise magic as unreliable nonsense, Balthazar nearly paid for it with his life. During his experiments, a freak explosion nearly killed Balthazar. However, he managed to survive. Since that tragic day, he has always been covered in shimmering metallic robes and worn his iconic golden face mask. What is underneath the mask is a complete mystery. Perhaps the explosion horribly disfigured his appearance. Perhaps the magical backlash turned his flesh into pure gold. Or maybe even mutation was the price he paid. Regardless, only Balthazar will ever know what lies beneath the gold. Despite this setback, Balthazar's desire for greatness only grew. He pushed on with determination excelling his magical strength to tremendous heights. The time had come when a wizard of great skill was allowed to challenge for position of Supreme Patriarch of the Colleges of Magic, and Balthazar Gelt decided to make his bid. The current Supreme Patriarch was Thyrus Gorman, one of the greatest bright wizards to ever live, a man who could unleash fiery devastation capable of burning entire armies to ash. The two were sealed in the Hall of Duels, and the challenge began. The Supreme Patriarch can only be challenged every eight years by a wizard found worthy by the eight Colleges of Magic. The way this is resolved is in the form of a magical duel. Both wizards are locked within the octagonal chamber known as the Hall of Duels with the legendary Staff of Volans hovering in the center. First to grasp the staff wins. And other than that, there are no rules, although it is generally frowned upon to kill one's opponent, though that does happen from time to time. Despite the strength of fire, it was metal that prevailed. Balthazar Gelt emerged having triumphed over Thyrus Gorman, and was named as the new Supreme Patriarch. He was gifted the Staff of Volans as a badge of his office, and became one of the closest advisors to the current Emperor. Karl Franz. He proved a clever advisor to the Emperor, for Gelt favored tactics of guile and cleverness over the bold statements to be found from the Emperor's champion Ludwig Schwarzhelm or Reichsmarshal Kurt Helborg. Unlike all of the other agents to Karl Franz, Gelt is a genius 
and is quite skilled at manipulating others. When his legendary genius fails, Balthazar has little issue falling back on his magic to trick his foes with mountains of lead transmuted to look like gold for a time to appeal to their avarice. This has made him many political enemies and no few amount of powerful individuals who would love to see him hanged. Yet he is unerringly loyal to the Emperor and his young optimism is treasured highly by Karl Franz. Balthazar Gelt has performed one particularly famous political move, however, in 2516 of the Imperial Calendar. After becoming Supreme Patriarch, Gelt was summoned by the Emperor to handle a rather nasty problem. Agents had delivered word to Altdorf that the Count of Nordland, Theodoric Gosser, was planning to assault the neighboring province of Hockland. He had amassed his treasury to pay a huge army of mercenaries to conquer Hockland, which Theodoric desired for his dreams of territorial expansion. Wanting to avoid a civil war at all cost, Karl Franz elected to send Gelt under the guise of performing other duties to stop this invasion. The Supreme Patriarch acquired a Pegasus from the Imperial Zoo and left immediately for Castle Salzenmund and arrived pretending to be an ambassador on business for the Emperor. However, Gelt quickly discovered Theodoric's vault and used his magic to turn all of the Electric Count's gold into lead. Upon discovery, Theodoric was enraged when he couldn't pay any of his mercenaries and they refused to fight for him, so his attempts at expansion faded away. He drew his runefang and went to behead the Supreme Patriarch, but discovered Gelt had fled for Altdorf immediately after performing the spell. The Count of Nordland has swore he will have Gelt's head in revenge one day. Thus, did Balthazar Gelt narrowly prevent civil war. As for fighting style, Gelt prefers to soar around the battlefield on the back of a pegasus, turning foe's armor to lead even as he augments his ally's armor to repel the strongest of blows. His most famous tactic is to fly up and unleash the terrible might of Final Transmutation, a spell that turns entire units of enemies into solid gold statues. He rarely involves himself in close combat, and relies heavily on his equipment and magic to guard him from shooting as he flies about using his art to turn enemies' bones into molten metal. Although not the greatest commander or warrior the Empire has to offer, Gelt is truly a terror on the battlefield thanks to his immense magical prowess. When it comes to his equipment, Balthazar Gelt has a very small selection of items that he uses, but each of them are quite potent. His weapon is the legendary Staff of Volans, forged by the very first Supreme Patriarch, obviously named after Volans himself. Volans was a powerful wizard who learned from the High Elven Archmage Teclis of Ulthuan during the Great War Against Chaos in the Age of Magnus the Pious. This staff bends the winds of magic more reliably to the will of whoever wields it. Second, he has the Amulet of Seagold, which I mentioned earlier he discovered in an elven ruin in Estalia during his travels. This ancient heirloom protects the bearer from sorcery and grows in strength against more powerful magics. Finally is his infamous Cloak of Molten Metal which is a mystic robe created by Balthazar himself that creates a series of images around that look exactly like him. These doppelgangers are always rotating around Gelt, shining with reflected light, making him nearly immune to ranged attacks because he's just impossible to pick out. As for mounts, Balthazar always takes to the battlefield atop a Pegasus, though he tends just to grab a mount from the Imperial Zoo and doesn't have any connection to any particular beast. Now, let's move on to the famous battles that he's participated in. Despite Balthazar Gelt's excellent record of showing up across a multitude of battlefields, the only in-depth recording of his appearance on a battlefield was at the Slaughter at the Six Spikes. Deep in the Great Forest of the Empire, there's a strange, miles-wide clearing hidden within a dark forest. It can only be reached by hacking through underbrush and twisted trees as no paths usable by men 
lead to it. The six spikes were six massive slabs of warp stone, possibly splinters, sent crashing down from the Chaos Moon, also known as Morselib, long ago. They were dark and unnatural things, and were sacred to the beastmen of the wood. Bray shamans came to perform rituals here, listening to the whispers that leaked from the rocks themselves. The beastmen came to hear a prophecy. Should enough blood wash the six spikes, a reward would be gifted to the beastmen. They brought many corpses to the spikes, yet it was still not enough. However, the beastmen were not the only race to take interest in the stones. The nefarious Skaven desired the huge monoliths of Warpstone for themselves and sought to undermine them so that they'd sink into the Under Empire itself. So the Skaven concocted a plan to steal the stones and waited for the Brayherds to leave the stones undefended, as they often did. Thus, they struck during a beastman migration. However, the Bray shamans had dark visions and sent a war horde led by Beast Lord Brack Gorhorn to investigate. Upon discovering the Skaven trying to steal the sacred stones, the entire Bray herd went into a frenzy and massacred the Skaven. This massacre was what the beastmen had needed all along, as the hordes of rats were given as bloody offerings to the six spikes. The forest shuddered as something changed the six spikes emitting clouds of darkness which began to cover the entire forest. The Celestial College sensed the disturbance immediately, and the Grand Astromancer sent warnings ahead. Kurt Helborg, the Reichs Marshal, gathered an army and marched to Talibekland immediately, gathering up what forces he could to bring battle to whatever awaited them. As they approached the Great Forest, the situation's dire nature became clear. Milk turned to blood, bestial faces appeared in flames, and a great, swirling column of darkness centered over the forest. The Imperial Army took three days to gather from Altdorf and march to the Six Spikes. But in the meantime, the beastmen had not been idle. They feasted and fought, their blood orgy driving the winds of magic to a howling gale. Great monsters such as one-eyed cygors, trolls, jabber slice, and giant spiders came crawling from the shadows to join the horde. Six Bray Shaman climbed the spikes, one for each, and drank in the magical power. They heard the dark gods, promising a return to the time of the beast, when men cowered in caves and the children of the dark gods ruled supreme. They spied the oncoming Imperial Army from their lofty perches, and howled for their armies to hold off the humans as the shamans enacted a great ritual. When Kurt Helborg finally cut into the clearing, he quickly identified the spikes as the source of the magical storm. His army deployed, and he gave command to his artillery, destroy the stones at all cost. Yet even as Hellblaster volleys and cannonballs soared to smash down the spikes, they were always deflected at the last moment in blinding flashes of green light. The Beastman army charged forward and slammed into the Empire force, and although the Imperial soldiers held against the bloodthirsty charge, it did not take a tactical genius to see how badly the men of the Empire were outnumbered. Though the beastmen held the advantage with great numbers and monsters, it was their shamans that proved the most deadly. Using the magic of the six spikes, the Bray shamans unleashed swarms of insects, blasted apart cannons with bolts of dark magic, and caused men to fall screaming as mutation ripped through their bodies. They held the upper hand until an amber wizard transformed himself into a dragon hurling forth at a monolith, killing the Bray Shaman atop in a snap of his jaws, before attempting to control the magic as he transformed back into the image of a man. However, his victory was short-lived, as a magic-hungry Sigor picked him up and bit the man in half. Things looked dire for the Empire. The Reichsmarshal had exhausted every resource at his disposal, 
and yet things were looking only worse. A pair of gorgons sight through the right flank before stopping to shovel the wounded and dying into their gluttonous mouths, the screams of the still living audible above the sound of cracking bones. It was then that Balthazar Gelt arrived. Having been warned by the Celestial College, he set out to relieve the Empire's line. He had not left Altdorf alone, however. Before leaving for the Six Spikes, he had bound the will of every creature within the Imperial Zoo to him, and now soared at the head of a monstrous host. He plunged down towards the Bray Shamans, along with his host of monsters, and each of the Shamans was torn apart even as they tried to blast griffins out of the sky. Gelt himself transformed the last Shaman into solid gold and shoved the statue off the spike to shatter below taking its place to wield the magical storm raging around him. With the immense amount of magic swelling within him, Gelt unleashed a massive golden orb from the staff of Volans and hurled it down into the Beastmen army. In an instant, over half of the horde was transmuted into a field of gilded statues. With that act, the day was won, the other wizards joining him on the remaining spikes as they cleaned up the remaining Beastmen to be dealt with. With victory achieved, Gelt knew the stones had to be dealt with. Immune to magic and heavy cannonballs, the Supreme Patriarch ordered them toppled and buried before he sealed the earth with powerful enchantments. Thus was the day saved. Looking briefly at skills, Balthazar Gelt is without a doubt the most powerful wizard in the Empire. His mastery over the lore of metal itself is second to none in the old world. His preferred spell is Final Transmutation, rendering his foes tough hides and armor useless as he transforms them into lifeless statues. He's a clever statesman, preferring schemes and quiet maneuvers over loud actions. In battle, he never commits to close combat if it can be avoided, and instead chooses to direct the battle with his powerful sorceries. For those of you that are interested, I'm going to go ahead and tell you about what happens to Balthazar Gelt during the End Times. In the prequel leading up to the End Times, Gelt created what's called the Wall of Faith, which was this barrier that he erected around the entirety of Slovenia, and any undead that tried to pass through it died instantly. Even Manfred von Karstein was unable to pass through the barrier, and he was effectively trapped within Slovenia. However, when Archon the Black arrived, the two of them were able to create a spell that shattered the wall and allowed the undead to roam freely once more. The next thing that Balthazar Gelt created was his greatest masterpiece, the Auric Bastion. However, he didn't come up with it on his own. It was actually a ritual taught to him by a Lamian vampire sent by Neferetta, intended to hold chaos at bay. This bastion was a massive creation. It was a wall that couldn't be climbed over, couldn't be punched through, and couldn't be damaged as it would regenerate that covered the entire northern border of the Empire. Had the wall been permanent, chaos almost certainly would have been stopped then and there, for even the might of Archaon could not pierce the wall. However, the forces of chaos found a way to take down the wall from the other side, for it required three things. It required Wizards of the Gold Order to hold it together. It required uh, Priests of Sigmar to provide the faith that made it immune to the taint of chaos. And then it also uh, required Wizards' assistance from other orders to bolster their spells. However, during the openings to the end times, the changeling, which is a demon who can transform into anything, managed to get in and start assassinating people. And he tricked Gelt into believing that Vultan, who is another character I might go over in a future video, was actually the changeling in disguise and trying to kill the Emperor, when in fact Vultan was just a real person. So, unfortunately, Balthazar Gelt teamed up with the changeling, unaware of what it was, and went to stop Vultan from killing the Emperor, when in fact the Changeling was using Balthazar Gelt to set him up for an assassination. Bef right before this period, Gelt did cross with Vlad von Karstein, who actually offered to mentor 
Balthazar Gelt and gave him a necromatic tome, which Gelt in his curiosity studied even though he believed he would not give in. However, when he went to save Karl Franz and things got wildly out of hand, Balthazar Gelt ended up using necromancy, which cast uh, doubt onto everything he had ever accomplished and he was labeled a heretic and had to flee. Because he had used heretical magics and he was the one who invented the Auric Bastion, the Church of Sigmar refused to assist with it any longer, and without the faith provided by the priests, the wall crumbled and chaos invaded. When he fled, he went to serve Vlad as a necromancer, and was left alone pretty much with his guilt, until he found redemption. At the Siege of Averheim, during the final book, Archaon, Balthazar Gelt showed up to help the Emperor fight back against the Ever Chosen himself. It was at this battle that Balthazar Gelt claimed the Wind of Metal and became the Incarnate of Metal. After becoming the Incarnate of Metal, he managed to use an extremely powerful spell to ha help most everyone escape the fall of Averheim, for Archaon was just too powerful. The only ones left behind, unfortunately, were a group of Dwarf Slayers who chose to stay behind in one final battle among them being Ungrim Iron Fist, who was at the time the Incarnate of Fire, where he died fighting Archaon. After that, Balthazar Gelt went with the forces of order to unite in Athel Loren, where the Council of Incarnates gathered, and Balthazar Gelt was by far the most hopeful of all of them. He was the only one who truly believed the world could be saved, and unfortunately, in a way, he was right, but because no one else sided with his optimistic view, the world ended up falling. He led the dwarves in all the final major battles, as being the incarnate of metal, he could activate their runes to new heights, and the dwarves were fairly confused by this and actually believed him to be blessed by Grungni. In the very end, however, when trying to stop the new uh, rift of chaos that opened up inside of Middenheim, Balthazar Gelt was stabbed in the back by Manfred von Karstein. This act caused the world itself to end. So Balthazar Gelt was the final casualty besides Manfred von Karstein, and is the reason many people hate Manfred so much, because Balthazar Gelt was the unfortunate target of Manfred's final betrayal. Alright, and that's pretty much everything for Balthazar Gelt, from lore to equipment to how he fights, everything. So I'm just going to sort of ramble a little bit about how I would like to see him show up in Total War Warhammer, since we know he's confirmed. Um, definitely, I hope that Balthazar Gelt has a much more interesting political alignment than Karl Franz, and that he's much more sneaky and has a very schemy like personality, and he's much better at manipulating his opponents to disable them, but he has a bad habit of making enemies, and big enemies, I might add. So getting to deal with the enraged um, Theodric Gosser, the Elector Count of Nordland, who might come after us, or the angry Marienburg captain who we gave those lead bars to to get Balthazar Gelt to Altdorf. There's a lot of very fascinating politics he gets to deal with, not to mention that he's the head of the Colleges of Magic, which means he has to deal with all of their issues and is likely very disliked by the Grand Theogenist Volkmar the Grim, who pretty much hates all forms of magic. He's a very intelligent person, um, but unlike Karl Franz, he's not the kind of hero you want to stick into combat. He very much tends to take a very supportive role of buffing his allies and getting into a position where he can just absolutely annihilate important enemy units, with Final Transmutation being his most signature spell, um, which is an extremely powerful spell in the lore and on tabletop. He's killed entire armies before in a single blow, though I'm sure it'll be much more uh, nerfed, because uh, if you're able to do that, that'd be kind of ridiculous. Um, I definitely hope they give him the shooting protection that he desperately needs, um, because for him to be a legendary lord that's not really into combat, I hope they make it so that it's very hard to kill him unless we make a mistake and get him stuck in or we're desperate to protect a flank. Um... Honestly, though, I'm, I'm really excited for him. Uh, I hope that his staff of Volans is able to give him a little bit of padding, just in case we're fighting somewhere where the Mids of Magic are terrible. That way he isn't just uh, completely useless. 
Um, but I'm glad he's in. I'm excited to be using the lore of metal, which is not a lore that's ever showed up in a video game before. Uh, we've had the lore of fire and life and heavens, I think. But, um, yeah, super excited. Can't wait to use him. Um, he'll be a really fascinating general, you know, a general that actually flies around the field but isn't, you know, getting stuck in like you would have with Carl Franz. Um, so I think he'll be really fun, especially for more classic Total War players who are used to keeping their generals in reserve and using their abilities to help their army as opposed to just hurling them into combat like you're going to have to with the likes of Ungrim Iron Fist or Carl Franz. So uh, that's pretty much everything I got on it. Uh, the only other thing I would say is that I hope he's really good at destroying really heavily armored units. Because the lore of metal is all about turning your enemy's armor against them. Because you're able to like heat up their um, armor or turn it to molten you know, lava almost. And it, with the more armor you wear, obviously the worse situation you're in. And then uh, the tabletop, the way it's represented is it does more damage for the more armor your opponent wears. So I hope he provides a really fun counter to enemies that are extremely tough, like um, heavy dwarf infantry or black orcs and the like. But um, that's pretty much everything I got for Balthazar Gelt. I really hoped you enjoyed the video. I put a lot of work into this one. Um, this is a bit of a different format than I did for the Carl Franz video, so please let me know in the comments below if you liked this and if it was okay. Um, or if there's anything you'd rather see more or less of, I really value all of your opinions. So please do comment. Uh, I read every one, and I'm excited to hear y'all's opinions. Um, if you like this video, please hit that like button. It helps me out. And subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video with your friends and on forums. And uh, I'll be back pretty soon with more videos. Uh, take care. Have a good night.